Can you join me, everyone, in Perth in welcoming everyone around the world? Thank you for joining us tonight. Yeah, we're excited because you're with us. And uh, to all our church family right across the world, in Malaysia, Singapore, Cambodia, Indonesia, New Zealand, in Botswana, South Africa, Zambia, Dubai, London, Sri Lanka, India, Mexico, online campus around the world, Cambodia, everywhere else I've missed. We're glad you joined us and we believe that tonight, this morning, whatever time it is you're watching this link, it will be the time that God ordained for you to be in the room and that the Word will change your life because that is who God is. Repeat after me, shout with a loud voice, say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not just the title of the most well-known psalm in the book. It is actually a truth that I believe God wants us all to digest today. Not just in the room, but everybody in the room. So let's make sure we receive that with faith. Everybody shout, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And you know, it's interesting. You can emphasize each word and it becomes more increasingly powerful. You say, the Lord is my shepherd. See, we, we, God has known my many facets. Savior, King, Healer, Provider. And they're all amazing because they're all God, but the benefits of Psalm 23 don't apply uh, the specific title given to God that we're supposed to yield to is the Lord is my shepherd. The healer would be a wonderful shepherd. The provider would be a great shepherd. The blesser would be a good, The God that gives you what you want would be a great shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd means there's an alignment and a yieldedness and a surrender that is so powerful. And he's not just... A shepherd in the good old days or in the days to come, he, the Lord is. He is your shepherd. I know in the 80s he moved, in the 90s there was revival, in 2000 it was wonderful, in 2019 it was wonderful, but the Lord still today, even in a pandemic, even in lockdown, the Lord is, he is your shepherd, he's my shepherd. I can believe sometimes that God is alive today and I can believe that he's moving in other parts of the world, but sometimes I struggle to personalize that he is my shepherd. I mean, I can believe for someone else. I can believe for the pastor. I can believe for the leader. I can believe for the people in the other country who are not going through the same thing that I'm going through, but I, I, I need to personalize this today and declare over my life that the Lord, the God who gets to do what he wants. He is, current tense, personal, my shepherd. Everybody say, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And so with that in mind, before you take your seats, let's repeat Psalm 23, because I'm sure you know it off my heart, so many would. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table in the presence. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on, say amen. 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 The title of my message today is Give the shop Shepherd His Job Back. Give the shepherd his job back. Look at the neighbor, the one you like more, and say, Give the shepherd his job back. Look at the person next to you, wherever you are, and say with a stern look, give the shepherd his job back, and you may be seated. Awesome. Wow. Come on, come on. Give the shepherd his job back. Give the shepherd his job back. You know, it's my desire, I think it's the heart of God tonight, that every person when you leave that link, when you leave this room, when you leave this message, you leave so much more conscious of the fact of the truth that you have a shepherd 
whose eternal, limitless, omniscient, brilliant, loving, caring, and to know that in theory is one thing, but to walk out with that reality is another. And I'm so committed to actually ensuring we all receive this fully. I'm so committed that you would not allow anything to get in the way of just hearing some words that to help you, I'm even going to try and look like a shepherd tonight. So I'm going to ask uh, Paul to help me. Now listen. As far as persecution goes, this might be as bad as it'll come for me. <laughs> the memes have no doubt started already. <laughs> but such is the embarrassment I'm willing to endure so that you will never forget this sermon for the rest of your lives. I never wear a bathrobe at home anyway. So it might as well get some use. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. Look at your neighbor and say, give the shepherd his job back. Give the shepherd his job back. I'll give you 30 seconds to process the ridiculous nature of the outfit that I'm wearing, and then I'm going to get into the content, or you will forget everything I say, and just remember that I dress like a clown. <laughs> Do you know, when you go to any form of... Uh, marriage counseling or you get any advice, they should tell you a simple truth. You should avoid words like always and never because they're inflammatory in nature. You never pick up your bathrobe from the toilet floor. No, I most of the time don't pick it up, but it's not that I never, because instantly the weight of the improvement I need is lost by your over-exaggeration of my issue. You always have a bad attitude when we go visit my parents. No, I most of the time have a bad attitude when I go visit your parents. I don't always. And so again, even if you have merit to what you're saying, avoid those extremities because they actually inflame rather than help. However, you could read Psalm 23 and know there's some absolutes that we could take to the bank and you can say it. So here's, here's what I want you to be aware of. If the Lord is your shepherd, Here's four things you can say with always absolute, absolute assurance. Ready for this? Number one, if the Lord is your shepherd, I'm never lost. I'm never lost. If the Lord is my shepherd, I'm never lost. What do you mean I'm never lost? Well, where, I might not know where I am, but I'm not lost because I have a shepherd who's not lost. And because he knows where he's going, it takes the weight off me having to know where I'm going because I got one job and that's to follow him. And if I'm following him, I can't be lost. It doesn't mean I have a clue as to where I am. You're like, but if you don't know where you are, aren't you lost? Yes, if you're doing the leading. But if you have a shepherd, I'm never lost. Because I don't have a clueless shepherd. I don't have a vague shepherd. I have the Lord as my shepherd. And he's completely aware of where everything is. Why am I in this state in this season? Why am I in this country during this pandemic? Why am I in this circumstance? I don't know, but I'm never lost because the Lord is my shepherd. And that, that takes the anxiety of leading. You know, I don't know if you've ever driven in a place where you've not been or familiar with and you're, you're, and you're just anxious around how to get there. And you feel the weight of responsibility, Google Maps, Waze, whatever, and you're just like, I've got to get there, and you're so paying attention everywhere. Recently, on our last trip to New Zealand in Auckland, uh, I had to drive about an hour from uh, where we were staying in Oriwa, those of you from Auckland. Kia ora to all our Auckland family. Give some love to all our Auckland family. I had to drive from this really 
North Place down to the airport, it's about an hour drive. And so I'm already unfamiliar with Auckland highways, Auckland, Auckland roads. I had no idea where I was going. And uh, that, that, that itself was bad. But then on top of that, it was the worst fog I think they'd ever had. So not only could I, did I not know the roads, even if I knew the roads, I couldn't see them. It was the worst fog. At six in the morning, it was just horrendous. So here I am, not knowing where I'm going, and I can't even see where I'm going. Then to top things off, you'd think, never mind, you got GPS. The GPS I had in the car that we hired was an out-of-date GPS. It wasn't one of those updated GPSs. So it wasn't entirely out of date. Some roads have been there a long time. But anyway, so I began this journey of absolute trauma and trepidation, such anxiety and worry I have not felt. Leading a church of multiplied thousands, it was so much easier than trying to navigate those Auckland roads in the fog that morning. And I literally, somehow, eventually, with emphasis on the word eventually, turned up. And I don't know if you remember when I turned up. I literally, I was white. It's not a racial statement. I'm just telling you that's what happened. I was, I think I hugged anybody and everybody that I saw. Oh my, I didn't know I was going to make it. Because it was so disorienting because this GPS was not in, in 200 meters, turn left. I'm like, 200 meters, I can't even see 20 meters. And then I'm going really slow and I'm going, what is in 200 meters? There's fog. And the Oakland highways, you take the wrong thing, good luck. <laughs> thank God, thank God that he is not an out-of-date GPS system. He is current, he's real, he's up-to-date, and so he knows everything about everything. He might be the ancient of days, but you'll find no one more present or current than who he is. And God is so up-to-date, he didn't need to learn woke terms and, you know, SA and ice in my veins and all that stuff that, this is my niece, she told, she told me all that. She told me all that. She told me that. So, you know, here's the thing. I don't know what all I said just then. I have to hope that didn't offend anybody. Don't log off, stay on, stay on. God doesn't have a, a map, but he is the way. Wow. And if the Lord is my shepherd, I'm never lost. Everyone say, I'm never lost. I'm never lost. You know, the anxiety of driving, the word anxious which says be anxious for nothing. The word anxious literally means to have a divided mind. If I'm anxious about something, my mind is divided, which is actually what breeds the anxiety. And what are the two minds I have? I'm doing the leading and the following. Everybody, give the shepherd his job back. Don't take the anxiety of your disorientation into your very DNA, because you will not only infect everyone with anxiety, but you have a God who is so up to date, who knows where he's going. I wanna tell you in this era, in this time, GPS isn't your shepherd, the government isn't your shepherd, the parents aren't your shepherd, the pastors aren't your shepherd, your bank account isn't your shepherd, the Lord is your shepherd. The Lord is your shepherd, in fact, there's a strange verse, it says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I mean, don't misunderstand that. That does not mean comfort. Like, this isn't a comfortable thing. You know, it's not like, oh, is that comfortable? Are you feeling comforted? No, 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 don't. <laughs> Here's what it means. It means that I can't get too far lost before his rod and his staff will bring me back into line. So what is comfort? It's not that this is comfortable. I live with the comfort of knowing I'm never lost when the Lord is my shepherd because his rod and his staff are there to ensure I never go too far off the rails. Aren't you glad your God will allow you the free will to do what you want, but he loves you because he answered your prayer when you said, God, I give you my whole life. And he said, okay, I'll make sure that I, you don't go too far off track. You're, if the Lord is your shepherd, you can take it to the bank. I'm never lost. I'm not sure where I am, but I'm not lost. Number two, I'm never lonely. If the Lord is my shepherd, I'm never lonely. You might feel lonely. You might feel like I got nobody. You know, my mom used to sing the song when we were younger. She's here tonight. Do you remember this song? 
I'm nobody's child. And she, she wasn't singing it about herself. She was singing it about some, I don't know who you're singing it about, but it was, a, it goes like this. I'm nobody's child. Anyone know the song? Just like a flower, I'm growing wild. No mommy's kisses. No daddy's smile. Just like a flower, I'm nobody's child. What a pathetically distressing, disappointing song. I mean, if the guy who wrote that song wasn't on antidepressants, he should have been. That is just the most depressingly, that is not who you are. If you have a shepherd, you're never lost and you're never alone. You're never alone, no matter, even if you're single, you're not alone. And by the way, I know lots of married people who are lonely. It's got nothing to do with your status. It's got nothing to do with your Facebook status. At the end of the day, you're never alone. You're never lonely. And even though your feelings may get to some space, and and here's what I find people do. They tend to glorify the uniqueness of their journey. And here's the thing. There's truth to it because we're all different. We're all uniquely different and we all have unique journeys, but don't glorify the uniqueness of your journey. There's some things that are unique, a lot of things that are the same as everybody else. But when you glorify the uniqueness of your journey, it comes from the same root that essentially says, I'm alone. And if the Lord is your shepherd, you're never alone. You're never lonely. And even if you're by yourself, you're not alone. As I was driving through the Auckland fog at about 10 kilometers an hour, by myself in the car on the way back from this airport, I, I'm not alone because I don't talk with the Holy Spirit. I got that voice in 20 meters, turn right. I'm not alone. There's a voice speaking to me. You know, thank God that your company isn't a GPS system isn't a voice that's pre-programmed with only four automated responses. Thank God the voice that you hear isn't the voice of a program that someone else wrote. Can I tell you, when you start listening to the wrong voices, you end up in the wrong places. Do you know, I found this so amusing. The GPS story reminded me of a story that, uh, of three Japanese tourists who actually hired a car and in Australia drove into a lake. In fact, I've got a picture of it. (laughs) And uh, in case you're wondering what's happening, I'll I'll tell you. These guys, I actually read the story. Here it is. Three Japanese tourists in Australia found themselves in an embarrassing situation after their GPS navigation system lured them down the wrong path. The three who are students from Tokyo, God bless our Japanese audience right now. God bless you. We 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 got a connect group in Japan, so we love you guys. But here's what happened to these guys. They set out to drive to North Stradbroke Island on the Australian coast. Thursday morning, and they mapped out their path on their GPS system. The road looked clear at low tide, but the map forgot to show the nine miles of water and the mud between the island and the mainland. As the three drove, now these guys are three living people, they drove their rented Hyundai Gets into Morton Bay. They found the GPS device guiding them from a gravel road into thick mud. They tried to get back to solid ground, but as the tide rose, they were forced to abandon their car. Passengers on the passing ferries watched in amazement. Now, here's the part. This is why I actually wanted to show you this. They interviewed this good sports, these three good sports. This is the response. It told us we could drive down there. Yuzu Noda, 21, told the local Bayside Bulletin. It kept saying, it would navigate us to a road. We got stuck. There's lots of mud. Aren't you glad we're not following an it? Aren't you glad you're not alone, but it's not an it that keeps you company? I don't care how impressive technology gets, the best IT will end up is it. And so we don't have an impersonal God. We have a personal God who loves you, who knows you, who knows where you are, who knows what you're going through. And if the Lord is your shepherd, everyone say, I'm never lost and I'm never lonely. Look at, look, look at the, the, the words in Psalm 23. He leads me 
through paths of righteousness, meaning he's there. Even in the valley of the shadow of death, he's there. In the presence of my enemies, he's preparing a table. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's there because it's his house. During your pain, during your problem, during your pleasure, during your pandemic, during your hurt, during your isolation, during your lockdown, the Lord is always with you. I am never lonely. The Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. He's never going to leave me. He's never, as we sang, going to forsake me. You are always with me. And that's why it's in God we trust. Here's the third thing you can say with absolute assurance. I've got four. I'm, I'm never late. I'm never late. I'm never late. This is an incredible assurance when you look at someone else and think you have missed your mark, missed your season. Why am I still stuck here when they are there? And why have they got this and I don't have it yet? Uh, And you can take it to absolute assurance that if the Lord is my shepherd, I'm never late. What does that mean? It means even though some door hasn't opened up for me the way I wanted to, I now take closed doors with a whole different view because because I have a shepherd, closed doors aren't rejection, they're protection. Because I have a shepherd, what I miss out on was what God saved me from. Now you might go, no, but I missed out on a promotion. You don't know what else came with that. I have learned to become a lot more comfortable with failure because what I previously interpreted as failure was my terms of what I wanted success to look like. But if I have a shepherd, I'm never late. The stories are told of the ones who were late to work on September 11. You are never late in the context of any season you may go through, which helps you process disappointment differently. It helps you process other people's uh, decisions differently. And whether you feel you missed out on a job or a spouse or a visa or a child or an opportunity, you feel like you're in a long line and why am I stuck here when everyone else in Perth seems to be doing fine and we're right in this country. And listen, I want to tell you, you're never lost in where you're meant to be. You're never lonely. God is with you and you're never late because if the Lord is your shepherd, if the Lord is your shepherd and you're truly following him wherever he is, you're meant to be even in the presence of your enemies. Like, God, why aren't we out of this battle yet? And he goes, we're in the presence of enemies? Let's make a table. Let's, 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 let's sit. What do you do at a table? You sit. I mean, you sit at a table. I mean, God, I sure I should be running from my enemies. They should be running from me. God says, relax. Sit down. I know they're all around, but sit down and let's eat. You know, Jesus had such an unhurried pace to his life. Nowhere in the Bible do you see Jesus ran. Everyone else was running after him, but he didn't run. There's no record of him going, oh no, the alarm went off. There's none of that. He, He never finds himself, you never find him rushed. He's always walking from place to place and just enjoying the journey. In fact, his friend died and he thought, oh, well, let's just wait here another couple of days. I've got things to do. There are other times where he was going to to, to heal a a young girl and another lady got healed and he stopped for a while to take the testimony. And he said, okay, all right. He he, he even walked up to people and he said, Michael, follow me. And and he he was walking through and yet he would stop and see the tax collector up the tree. Now, now here's the thing. If, If Jesus was never rushed, and we're following him, we should never be rushed. Unless you're overtaking him. But to to follow him means if we walk in his path. Now, he was a busy person. He changed the world, and he turned it upside down in three years. He did more than anybody's ever done. The books of the world can't contain what he did, and yet his productivity didn't come from someone else's sense of punctuality. Now, I do need to clarify, this is not a license for those of you who come to church 20 minutes late to go, I knew I was on track and I've been asking the Lord for a sign. (laughs) 
got people that are late to church at home. <laughs> How do you get late to church at home? Where are you if you're late to church at home? I'm never late is not an excuse for those who avoid punctuality. It is simply an absolute commitment to understanding that if God is your shepherd, if the Lord is your shepherd, there is no circumstance, no issue that you need to ever look at someone else and go, I've missed out. And if Jesus was never rushed, he's a rabbi in the New Testament, he's a shepherd in the old, and whether we're sheep or student, we get the privilege of following. And it, whether we follow him as rabbi or shepherd, he was not in a rush, so we should never be in a rush. Everybody, give the shepherd his job back. Give the shepherd his job back. Say, God, I leave the anxiety at your feet, and I know that I'm not alone. I know that I'm not lost, and I know that I'm not late. You know, I don't know what season you're late for. I mean, I, I wanted to be married at 21. My, my younger brother got married before me. My sister got married before me. I want to get married at 21. I got married at 31. And there was no reason. At 21, I was fine. In fact, I was pretty stunning. And at the end of the day, I had no idea why I didn't get married at 21. But I will say this, maybe God knew, and if I thought, why am I delayed, why am I delayed, why am I delayed? See, there's purpose in every delay if the Lord is your shepherd. Yes. And, and maybe what the Lord had for me, uh, I wasn't ready for, or maybe I wasn't, uh, you know, maybe she wasn't, I don't know, but all I know is I'm never late when the Lord is my shepherd. So why stress? Why carry the weight of everything that you wish? God, why do we not? Why isn't this happening? We prayed, we fasted. Oh, I believe in knocking in perseverance. I believe in all those things. But at the end of the day, the Lord is my shepherd. And so I'm on track. I'm not rushed. God is good all the time. And I'm going to keep going like that's not going to change. And finally, if the Lord is my shepherd, I'll never lack. I'll never lack. I, I'm never late. I'm never lost. I'm never lonely. And I'll never lack. It does not mean I will be excessively rich. Maybe it will. But I don't know. All I know is I'll never lack because if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. The first line, I shall not want. And you see through this text, by the way, Psalm 23 isn't sort of a skip through the tulips, there's some stuff going on. There's the valley of the shadow of death. There's enemies. There, there's challenges. There's loneliness. There's some good stuff too. But it's, it's, a, it's a smattering of circumstance. And yet you never find the, the, the psalmist lacking. And through it, the threads of provision are there. I shall not want... You anoint my head with oil. Do you know you carry an anointing that is grace from God to do what he's called you to do? You don't lack if you have an anointed head. My cup runs over. In fact, I, that doesn't sound like a lacking cup, a cup that runs over. He ends it by saying, goodness and mercy shall follow me. It'll chase me down. Stop running after what God intended to chase you down. Stop running after that blessing or that provision or that person. God said goodness and mercy will follow you. You don't have to chase it. You follow the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. Goodness and mercy come following after me. You know, I remember the first time I spoke to a billionaire. I mean, a real billionaire. I mean, not a rich guy, not a guy who, you know, has a lot of things. I mean, this guy, he owns two planes few common connections. We got, I had the privilege of meeting this a few years back, and he'd, he was in Malaysia at the time. Uh, he lives in whichever, well, he lives wherever he wants to live, I suppose. He, he actually lives between four different countries. And uh, he happened to be in Malaysia. He hired out the most expensive penthouse in the uh, entire hotel, the most expensive hotel in uh, Malaysia, which, uh, you know, and so I got the privilege of meeting him. So I, I went there, I was very nervous. I, I put on some good clothes, I didn't wear this. I definitely got changed. Oh. I definitely got changed, but anyway, I went in there and I thought, this is gonna be, wow, I don't know, what do you say to a guy like that? Anyway, I went up to him and, you know, said hi, you know, he's a very, really nice guy, humble guy, you know, was, we, we sat down, we talked for about four hours, and in the first part of the discussion, because I don't know him, I wanna get to know him, I sort of said hi, uh, you know, and I asked what I thought would be a normal, courteous question to ask to a new person, so uh, how long are you in Malaysia for? And he looks at me like, oh. 
He looked at me like I asked him the stupidest question in the world. I said, how long have you been? He was like, till I, till I want to leave. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm doing the math in my head how much this penthouse would cost. And most of us have budgets. And most of us go, okay, if I'm going to hire out the most expensive penthouse in Malaysia, uh, that means I could be there for 35 minutes. Okay, yeah. So, all right. So, so I've, I've worked out how long. I'm like, I, I didn't think I knew he had money, but I, I just thought out of courtesy. And he, but he didn't look at me mad or arrogant. He just looked at me like, I don't know. I'll decide when I want to leave, I guess. I'm like, don't you have a flight to catch? Uh, I own the planes, you know. I mean... <laughs> It was the most disarming, strange, incredible conversation. After four hours, I left, and all I could say is I had this amazing sense of calm and peace. It's like the first time I'd been in the presence of someone who's got no awareness of lack. There's nothing you can't have, nothing you can't do. There's nothing, you know where you can't go. He can, literally had no lack. So it's like the, the pace at which he moves, there was just an ease and a grace. And after four hours, I found myself just going, walking out of the hotel going, yeah, what's all your rush, you people? And if time, three to four hours in the presence of a human who has no lack, had that impact on me. What should the impact of spending time in the presence of Almighty God, who is infinite, who has no lack, who is not lost, who has never been lonely from, what should that do to me? If that's what a person, and he has lack in other areas. He needed healing. That's one of the reasons he wanted me to go meet him. But in the material sense, he had no lack. And the awareness of that shifted my whole pace. What should time in the presence of the Lord do? I'll never lack. If the Lord is my shepherd. I might not have much, but I have the Lord. And he's worth more than any amount of Bitcoin. You know, I think I'll get rid of this now. <laughs> the, um, thank you, Paul. There you go. You can, you can do whatever you want with that. <laughs> Just don't hit anybody. You know, the, here's the thing. To know that you'll never lack means that you're aware of provision. You're not just trying to go, I'll never lack, I'll never lack, I'll never lack, and talk yourself up into a space. You've got to become aware of the provider. You've got to become aware of the one who has no lack. To know you're never, to, you, to, to know you're never late means you're not just going, I'm not late, I'm not late, I'm not late, why am I still in this place? You've got to become aware of purpose and understand I, I, I'm following a God of purpose. There's a purpose for every season. He's the God of my present. He's the God of my future. And he's holding it all together. And he's stitching it. He knows when things are coming, even though they're not on my timetable. Uh, I'm aware of purpose. Uh, to know that I'm not lost is not just an uh, internal mental sense of, I'm going to pretend I'm not lost. No, there's a divine peace that passes all understanding. It, it surpasses understanding and logic. How can I be lost when I'm following the Lord who is my shepherd? And to know that I'm not alone, I can't just talk myself out of loneliness. I've got to become aware of his presence. If I don't know his presence, me saying I'm not alone is mental gymnastics into a state That's, you can get pepped up for that all you like, but when you come into his presence, you don't need anyone to tell you you're not alone. You know you're not alone. When you, when you feel the presence of the provider, whatever's left, five loaves, two fish, a little bit of oil, whatever, it's plenty. When you, when you know that he's with you, sickness becoming death has no hold on him because even death has lost its sting. When you know that he has a plan for your life, 
even if you don't know the plan for your life. Maybe today's the day you give the shepherd his job back and you say, God, I'm, I'm handing the compass, I'm handing the keys, I'm handing my anxiety, I'm handing my divided mind, I'm handing everything back to you. And I'm asking you, God, you'll do a far better job than I ever will. But why don't we stand to our feet and if you're around the world, wherever you're at, Maybe this is a moment where God can actually speak to you in a really personal way. All I know, all I know is that my shepherd isn't a GPS. It isn't the government. You know, 16 months ago when the world went into chaos, 17 months ago, And there are people right now from countries that are in shocking states. We have a greenhouse student in Afghanistan. Even in the east coast of Australia right now, other parts of the world, you know what is happening? People are just saying, who do I trust? Who do I follow? Who do I believe? It's almost like depending on the channel I watch, that's my shepherd for the day. See, everybody here has a shepherd. Your feelings might be your shepherd. Your flesh might be your shepherd. Your dreams may be your shepherd. Your questions may be your shepherd. Your past hurts may be your shepherd. That's what's leading you. Who do I follow? What do I trust? Uh, you know... Well, so people aren't my shepherd. The, the vaccine's not my shepherd. The government's not my shepherd. So some ruler's not my shepherd. Who's my shepherd? And people in crisis are never been more lost. And, and yet at the same time, if there ever there should be a group of people that are at peace, that understand purpose, that are aware of presence and understand provision in the worst times, it is those who call the Lord their shepherd. And yet there are people all around the world with the name Christian, but have taken on the burden of a shepherd. Tonight, this morning, give the shepherd his job back. Liquidate everywhere you have invested trust that is ultimate and place it in God, who's eternal, who's limitless, who's loving, who's beyond anything you've ever seen or known or felt, and yet today, maybe you've never made that decision, and today could be the day that you actually give your life to Jesus. And maybe you've never made that decision, maybe you have. But I want to invite everybody to pray this prayer with me. I want everybody online right now to pray this prayer. Repeat these words after me. If in your heart of hearts you say, you know, I, I want to today ensure that one smarter than me, one more eternal than me, one greater than me is the one that's leading my life. How, how, do, I, how, do, I, how do I come to grips with that and how do I know where to go? And, and, and yet it starts by just simply surrendering and saying, God, I want you to be my shepherd. So, so I'm going to ask you, everybody in this room, everybody in Perth right now, and everybody around the world right now to repeat these words after me. But here's the key. If you would mean them with all your heart, something is going to happen. And, and we don't want you to do this flippantly. We don't want you to do this uh, with, with, with no intention behind it. But as you speak it, mean it. Jesus died on a cross to make this so simple. He said, only believe. Only believe. And if you're like, I'm having trouble believing, Let, let's help you on the journey. Let's pray together and see what God can do. Let's pray together. Repeat after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus I give you my whole life. My whole life. Come, into my heart Come into my heart and change me and change from the inside, out. the inside out. I'm sorry for doing life my own way. Please forgive me of all of my sin. Be my savior. Be my shepherd. And be my best friend. 
from this day on, help me to follow you. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.